Good morning. It's 30 minutes past the hour. We're going to say good morning together now to a guy in Ohio in his hospital bed because he's being treated for the coronavirus right now. Now, at first he said, I didn't, I didn't think I would survive. Protect yourselves. Do not go in the crowds. Do not shake hands. Stop hugging each other. Wash your hands continually. They don't know how I got it. No one in my circle has been sick or exposed. Kevin Harris is joining us now. Good morning from, I think, St. Joseph in Warren, Ohio. And Kevin, at least you have the breathing apparatus out of your nose. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I just found out two days ago I'm going to live. I'm actually excited. <laughs> we're excited, too. Was it that bad? Did Were you touch and go? Oh, there, no, it wasn't touch and go. It was all go. It was bad. Did you, um, did they tell you in what critical condition that it put you in that bad of a condition? Why don't you tell me about how you felt, Kevin? Well, actually... I run on an elliptical for an hour every day. Mm -hmm. And my diet is really strict. I don't drink, I don't smoke. I've, I've never done drugs of any kind. I'm super healthy. Even my uh, heartbeats per minute at rest are 40 beats per minute. Oh, wow. So I'm in pretty good shape. And the virus was like, oh, I'm gonna fix you. You think you're healthy? Let me show you what I can do to healthy people. And it started turning my lungs to glass. That is and, and such an incredible way to I describe rest. it. Go ahead, go ahead. The more I rest, the sicker I got. And it's really weird because it lets you feel better when you lay down, when you breathe slow, but the whole time your lungs and your body is defeating the whole purpose. You start to turn the glass and it crystallizes and more and more of your lung capacity is taken away from you. But when you get up to move, your air drops to half, your, your air consumption, you choke, you throw up, the pain, the headache, everything comes back when you move, but that's what keeps you alive. It helps your immune system to fight back. But the virus makes you feel good about laying down. It's almost like a high because you get this feeling that I just wanna lay here forever, but you know if you breathe, you're getting less and less and less oxygen and sooner or later, you're going to go into respiratory failure and cardiac arrest. So you so have to So they make you move. get up then? Oh my God, yes, they make you get up. And when they make you get up, you throw up, you cry like a little baby. And I can remember the first time it happened. After I threw up, I could breathe. So the next time around, I tell the nurses, no matter how much I beg, do not lay me back down make me go through it. It takes about 20 minutes to go through one of those episodes. But wow. once you get to the other side of it, you can breathe a little bit better. I mean, it's the weirdest thing. You think you're gonna die during one of those episodes. You, I mean, you know you're gonna die, but then you don't. When just the opposite, when you lay in the bed, the fever goes away, the headache goes away, the body pains go away. You feel this relief come over your whole body and it's killing you. Wow. Kevin, I have never heard anybody explain these episodes as well as you just did. Now I can see why there's such panic and alarm about ventilators and why people need ventilators and they're afraid they don't have enough in the hospital system in the United States. Did you have to be on one? No, they did everything they could to keep me off a ventilator. And that's, you know, another one of those misconceptions. I know they're only trying to help and keep people from panicking. But if you don't breathe on your own and your immune system does not kick in, you are going to die. Kevin, I think that your words can be a big wake up call for a lot of people who might be gallivanting around on a beach or, you know, out saying, oh, I'm young. You got some advice, I bet? Well, I'll tell you this. I didn't know. I had the coronavirus. I thought I had the flu. Even when I came in the hospital, every doctor in this hospital said, you don't have the symptoms, 
it's not that bad. It doesn't go this way. It doesn't go that way. You have some very, very bad pneumonia until three days later when the test came back and they're all sitting there with their mouths open like, we don't know what to do. When your doctor says to you, there's nothing we can do and you need to pray and beg God for mercy. I never heard a doctor do that before, but I heard that no in this way. situation. And I thought, you know, I, who, that's what I said. Are you actually saying this to me? And, you know, it came down to one of those moments of truth where they can either lie to you or they can tell you the truth because one day they got to see God too. And wow. that's what it came down to. No one could Kevin, tell me it, I was going to live. Are, do you know, are you St. Joseph's first um, coronavirus patient? Actually, I am, and I'm the first one in our in our valley in the county. And the thing about that was, I own a body shop and construction. We do a bunch of other things, so I see 30 to 40 people a day, most of which I've never met before. But because I'm so, you know, public and such a, a major public profile, I tend to find times to be alone for days at a time. So it just so happened that 10 days before I got sick, I hadn't spoken to anyone closer than seven or eight feet. And most of the places I went, I went out of town. So people didn't know me, so I didn't have to talk to people. I was just mm -hmm. in a Kevin mode and I didn't want to be bothered. When I got sick, my son was coming home from school for spring break. My employees wanted to come over and check on me and I wouldn't let anybody in the house. I kept telling them, you cannot come in here. Whatever I got, it is bad and you don't want this flu. Because the doctor saw me for 30 seconds and no test, no nothing, said, man, you got the flu really bad and gave me Tamiflu and sent me home. And fortunately, that was the only place I had gone to. Now, the, the killer of all that is that, that law thing. I kept laying in the bed because I felt better when I laid still. And then one day I realized I'm not going to be able to breathe the next time I have an episode. And they got me to the hospital. And then, like I said, three days later, I got the coronavirus. No one thought I had it. And it, it felt completely different to you. Isn't it strange how some people report, oh, I just had a, you know, a sore throat, a bit of a cough. Well, other people like yourself, an exerciser, only 55, it has you in a hospital bed. Kevin, what are they telling you right now? Um, how long may you have to be there? You've been there 11 days, I think. Um, how are you now? Well, to, to be quite frank with you, yesterday they said, you know, we, we there was nothing that we could do for you when you got here, you know? So you're getting better and you're not on oxygen anymore. So you can go home and ride the rest of this out. You don't have a fever, haven't had a fever for three days. The problem is they said you have to be in total isolation, but you're not strong enough to walk. So somebody has to take care of you. I'm like, what? How do I be in total isolation, but somebody has to take care of me? Mm -hmm. you know? And then I said, how do I get home? Oh, we're gonna call you a cab. Okay, so you're gonna call me a cab? Who's gonna drive the cab? My kids aren't gonna come and get me. I'm not letting them anywhere near me. And well, you know, I asked them, are your kids gonna take me home? They looked at me like I was stupid. So now, you know, we don't know what we're gonna do. I do know that until I test negative, they're gonna have to pull me out of here kicking and screaming and just throw me out of the hospital because I was lucky and fortunate that I did not expose hundreds of people that I normally see during a week yeah. to this virus simply because I wanted to be alone. So God had me in that mode where I just wanted to be alone for a while, but it saved my community. And now you want to throw me out there. I, I haven't had a negative test. Um, I've actually had five tests. The first three came back bad. The fourth one came back and then they did a fifth one four days ago. And when I asked for the results, they said, well, the CDC said we took it too soon. So we don't have any results but we're gonna send you home. And like I said, now they're trying to figure out how do you send me home to total isolation, but I gotta have somebody take care of me because I can't walk. You know, that might be um, so, the first time that uh, a complication like that has been illuminated for us. And that is, are you strong enough once you have this to go home, but 
you have to self-care as well as self-isolate, and that in itself for many people's conditions will be a contradiction. Um, Kevin Harris. Exactly. And, yeah, and Kevin Harris, um, who's joining us right now from his hospital, but I'm telling you, in Warren, Ohio. And he also wanted to point out, too, um, that he hasn't gone to exotic places. He went to Cleveland. That's as far as he got. And, um, and somehow it's come down with coronavirus. Hey, Kevin, how are you passing the time? Robin, I am so sick. I do not care. Got it. I don't care if I sleep in the dark. I don't care if I be alone. And you know, one thing is that the healthcare workers are, are those, I mean, you talk about heroes. They come in here with smiles. They have children. They've even got people in the community ostracizing them for taking care of me. And these people are risking their lives and the lives of their families, but the community is rejecting them because everybody's scared of the virus. I've never seen anything like it. Let's, and yet let's they not still do that, keep right? They are the heroes. Yeah. yeah, and they know what I've been through. Imagine they don't want this, but they've had to listen to my story a hundred times how it takes me an hour to get to the bathroom. My bathroom is 50 feet away from my bedroom, and I'd have to go. 10 or 15 feet and lay on the floor for 20 minutes to catch my breath and then continue to the bathroom. I mean, this is real. And this is one of the reasons why they don't want to send me home now because they already know I went through six days where I crawled to the bathroom or across. I made a ham sandwich on the floor of my kitchen because I couldn't get up against the counter and the table to put Miracle Whip on my sandwich. I ate my sandwich on the floor with my employees standing outside the door begging me to let them in the house. And so, no, they can't come in here. This is bad, Robin. It's going to be really bad for a lot of people. Kevin Harris, we are all ears, and we're all hope for you, too, that you continue to get better. Um, I'm going to ask our producers to keep in contact with you. Um, if we can send you right now a mental get well card, we all are. And, and Kevin Harris, what a strong guy. Hey, you know what I'm really grateful for? Your, your, your voice, your, your diaphragm, your breathing, you sound healthy. Your voice is strong. And for that, Kevin Harris, we are so grateful. Thank you. And thank you so much. All right. Thank you. And get better. We mean it. We'll go to a break. We'll be right back. It's Kevin Harris.